Hello, I'm Captain Ben Hurst. I'm the County Shooting Officer for Derbyshire Army Cadets. And what we're going to be looking at in this presentation is vernier scales. Objectives then. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to state why vernier scales are used, read the elevation verniers, read the wind verniers, and be able to identify the different elevation changes when shooting at different distances. First of all, before looking at the verniers and the sight system, we're going to have a look at trajectory to give everyone a better understanding of how the bullet works. Trajectory is the path followed by a projectile flying or an object moving under the action of given forces, such as gravity or the curvature of the earth. Projectiles path values are determined by both the sight height and the range at which the sights are zeroed, which in turn determines the elevation angle. A projectile following a ballistic trajectory has both forward and vertical motion. So the distance between the fire and the target, the bullet doesn't fly straight in a flat line to that target. Due to the pull of gravity, if it did that over the distance, gravity will pull that round down. So what has to happen is the barrel of the rifle needs angling up slightly to counteract that gravity. And as it's fired, it will fire in an upward arc and gravity will pull it down into the target. And as you see, as you get further away from the target, that angle needs to be increased. So why do we need verniers? Because the sights only need to be moved a fraction to get the required angle to fire the round, the naked eye alone could never notice the movement accurate enough to make the shots hit the middle of the target. This is the reason that the vernier scale was adapted for shooting. The scale is measured in minutes and there are normally four clicks in the sights to make a full minute and see below how the minutes are broke down on the target. So you'll notice there's grid squares on every scorecard. These are all accurately calculated to determine the distance that you're firing at. And just so you understand, a minute is a fraction of a degree and there is 60 minutes in the degree and obviously 360 degrees in a full circle. So that's how it breaks it down. So we're talking about really minuscule fractions of an angle. As full ball shooting is a discipline shot at a number of different distances, due to the drop rate of the round as you get further away from the target, you need a way to work out how to set your sights for each distance to make your shots hit the target, or better still, the bull. It has been calculated from the speed and weight of the bullet and the gravitational pull how much the shot will fall at different distances. Once this was worked out, the angle of what the barrel would need to be at to hit the target was calculated. This is known as trajectory. The vernier scales fitted to the sight enable the firer to accurately set the sights to suit the distances required. The divisions on the fixed scale of the elevation vernier are five minutes in size. As you can see on the illustration to the right of the screen, starting off at zero, the small graduation represents five minutes, the larger graduation represents ten, and then with value markers every twenty minutes, so twenty, forty and sixty. The divisions on the moving scale are four minutes in size and are mounted to the main site itself. Moving one scale by one minute will cause two lines on the scale to line up. So at the minute where zero and zero line up together, that means the elevation at this stage is at zero.
by moving up one minute of angle, which is four clicks on the site, that will cause the first line on the moving scale to line up with the first line on the fixed scale. To go up to two minutes, it will mean that the second line on the moving scale will line up with the second line on the fixed scale and so on with three minutes. The third line on the moving scale will line up with the third line on the fixed scale. For four minutes, you get to see the pattern. The fourth line lines up with the fourth line on the scale. Now, the easiest way to calculate this is first of all, identify where the zero is sitting on the moving scale. And at the moment, this is between zero and five. So you know that's what the value is going to be, somewhere between zero and five. And then on the moving scale, count up the smaller graduations until where one matches. So at the minute, you know it's zero, one, two, three, and then four lines up in line with 20. That's four. And then finally, for five minutes of elevation, the zero will line up with the number five on the fixed scale. This example will show 10 minutes of angle where the zero lines up with the 10. And this example will show 15 where the zero lines up with number 15. OK, we're going to have a little bit of a practice now then with a few examples. The first one for you to look at then is this one. So just take a minute to think about it. So for this, the zero is between the 20 and the 25. And then I will count up the small graduations. So 21, 22 and 23 for that example. Hopefully we've all got the same. And we'll have a look at example two. So just take a minute to think about it first of all. So for this one, the zero sits between the 10 and the 15. And then if you count the small graduations up on the moving plate, one, two, three, four. So that will make 14 minutes of elevation. And then the final example. So the zero is sitting between five and 10. And for this one, it's the first line on the small graduations that lines up. So that will make six minutes of elevation overall. So moving on to look at the wind verniers. When setting the sights for wind, the vernier must be able to cope with both left and right windage. To do this, the moving scale has graduations to the left and to the right of zero, as can be seen on this example here. It's important during the zero in phase that when you have managed to get where you are hitting the center of the target in zero wind conditions, that this vernier is slipped and adjusted so it reads zero. This is gonna be one of the biggest aids with regards your wind reading ability as you progress forward. Moving forward, as you can see, there was a slight sight adjustment between the last slide. This is showing one minute of left wind. So anywhere that the moving scale, where the zero is left of the fixed scale zero, that shows left wind. So at the minute, 
the zero is between the fixed scale of zero and five and lining up with the first graduation that denotes one minute left wind. This example is showing two minutes left wind, three minutes left wind, four minutes left wind and five minutes left wind. And going back to zero, looking the other way, you have one minute right wind, two minutes right wind, three minutes right wind, four minutes right wind, and five minutes right wind. So we have a couple of practice examples now for you to all to have a look at. First example, so have a think about that. The first thing is that the zero is to the right, so we have right wind on the site at this stage. And the zero is sitting between 10 and 15. And the second small graduation on the moving scale is the one that lines up. So it's between 10 and 15 and two in, that makes 12. So 12 minutes right wind. So if we have a look at this example then, in this case, the zero is to the left of the fixed bracket. It's between the five and the 10 this time. And the first small graduation is the one that lines up. So this is six minutes left wind. This example then, have a think about it. So first of all, we have right wind on the site. The zero is between the five and the 10. And if you count the small graduations, that's four minutes across. So that will make five plus four is nine minutes right wind. And then finally, For this one, we have left wind again. And in this example, we are between 10 and 15. And for this one, it's the third graduation along. So that would make 13 minutes left wind. Moving on then to start looking at setting the sights for the various ranges. As I'm sure you all know by now, the idea of shooting is to do everything exactly the same. But as you make it back through greater distances to a thousand yards, when you move your sights, you will find that you're resting the cheek in a different part of the stock to that that you would be if you were shooting at 300 yards. Typical chart for the elevation rises between the distances is shown now. As you can see, from 300 to 500, there's a six and a half minute rise. From 300 to six, there's a 10. From three to nine, there's 26 minutes. And from 300 to 1,000 yards, there's 32 minutes of elevation. Now, if you look at this example here, if you were to set your zero at 300 meters to be 10, the difference between 300 meters to raise the zero to 42 minutes, which would be a thousand yard elevation, is a huge jump on the site, as you could see from the two images changing. The ladder foresight, instead of moving in quarter minute clicks, 
moves in five minute sections to enable you to make any of the big movements on the foresight so you keep the rear sight in pretty much the same place. And the illustration below gives an example of a typical ladder foresight starting with zero. So when zero in the rifle for 300 meters you want the foresight to be set at zero and look at setting the rear sight to 10. And as you move back the greater distances, make the big moves on the front sight and the small minor adjustments to make that graduation, the rise on that chart calculate correctly. As you can see, that is zero. Small movement on the graduation moves that to five minutes elevation, then 10. And then you have an example of 20 and 25. Looking at wrapping up the lesson then now, looking at the summary of what we've covered today in this lesson, hopefully you've been taught to state why the vernier scales are used, to be able to accurately read elevation verniers, accurately read wind verniers, and be able to identify elevation changes for different distances. Now one of the things that I didn't cover at the point of the slide, as the site moves in quarter minute clicks, four clicks per minute, the only examples that I showed was full minutes. Now as you get more experienced and familiar with your site, you should be able to read that by the half minutes and quarter minute clicks where the lines simply will sit between the full minute positions. And the next stage going forward when you've got your sights in front of you is a case of just having a play, having a go at setting these sights at various settings and working with your other firers to practice that. And that concludes the Vernier Scales lesson. Thank you for listening.